So I made a video early this year about checking accounts and how much money you should have in your checking accounts. And it looks like it helped a lot of people out, but it's probably had a bunch of people wondering, wait, well, what about my savings account? Now I've made quite a few videos about saving money and putting money into an emergency fund. But I wanna take this video to go over the savings account in your bank, how much money should go in it, and the different types of savings accounts that everyone should have. This means we need to first look at your average, normal, boring savings account within your local bank. This is gonna be your first line of defense as far as savings goes. And the whole point of this account is so that you can have your money in a safe, secure account where you can draw money from at any given time. And the reason I call the savings account boring is because the interest rate you get on the money that you're saving is extremely low. So if you're banking with any of the big banks such as Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Chase Bank, etc., you're looking at a point 0.01% interest rate, which means you would need to save $1,000 before you even get $1 in interest. That's what I mean by extremely low, which is exactly why you shouldn't put your entire life savings into your standard savings account. And beyond what I just said, there's actually two big reasons for this. For one, that means all of your money is in one place, which means you can see all your money at once, which means that you're more likely to spend or overspend that money. Whereas if it were separated, some of your money would be out of sight, out of mind, and you would typically never touch it at all. And two, you miss out on opportunities to allow your money to make money for you. So in order to answer the question, how much money should you have in your savings account, let's take a 30 year old who just saved $20,000 for an example. And let's say this 30 year old really knows what they're doing so they diversify and they have a bunch of different types of savings accounts that everyone should have and I'm about to share them right now. So we have a standard savings account, an emergency fund, a short-term savings account, and a long-term savings account. And these are the four main savings accounts that everybody, I mean everybody should have, especially when you first start saving. And there's actually one more account to focus on to make your money make money, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. So with $20,000 saved that you just have at your disposal, a small portion of that needs to go to your standard savings account. And with the example of $20,000, that means you have money to spread across multiple types of accounts, right? So in this example, I would say that $3,000 in your standard savings account would be plenty. How did I come up with this number? Good question. When you consider that most people don't even have $1,000 in their savings accounts, and when you consider that $1,000 is usually the recommended amount to put in your savings account to get started, not to mention the fact that we have to think realistically here, and realistically $1,000 isn't that much money. Like for most people, it won't even cover their rent or their mortgage. So now that we have the 1,000 number in our heads, that's exactly why I chose 3,000. Not only is $3,000 triple that, but it also represents the number that most people spend on their necessities every single month. That's rent, mortgage, utilities, transportation, groceries, food, all that good stuff. That's what all of that number encompasses. So I think that's a good amount of money to have just at your disposal if anything goes wrong, if any financial setbacks happen, you at least have those expenses for your necessities. The things that aren't necessities, those can wait. Now, of course, the goal for your standard savings account is not to really have to touch it at all. It's just really there for emergencies. But, but I just wanna be clear, it's not an emergency fund. It really just acts as a money cushion for you. Next, we have emergency funds, and I have a ton of videos alone just on emergency funds. But this video is going to show you exactly how emergency funds stack up against other savings accounts in terms of how much money goes in them. As for the emergency fund, we should have $12,500 in it. That's right, $12,500 with of this $20,000. So in addition to the $3,000 that we just put into the savings account, the standard savings account, that makes $15,500. So we have a little bit to go. So we're gonna keep going. And the bottom line and the entire mindset behind this is the emergency fund is absolutely 100% of the time gonna be the biggest account that you have as far as having a money cushion. That's right, that's where you're gonna to wanna to prioritize most of your money, especially at the beginning. And the reason for that is because this is the account that will ultimately protect you 
for multiple months, maybe even years, depending on how much you put in it, in case that there's an injury or you get fired or there's a bunch of medical bills or something that inhibits you from being able to spend the normal amount of money you would on your expenses. All those scenarios there, and again, I have videos about this going in depth about the different types of scenarios. Check those out, they're extremely valuable. And this number typically represents three to six months worth of expenses. In our case of this 30 year old who saved $20,000, you know that there's $3,000 of their money in their standard savings account. So this is their standard expenses times four and then some, if that puts it into perspective. And this is just the beginning. This isn't even like long term. This, this is just what they're, how they're separating their money right now. So eventually this number is gonna get much, much bigger. And just to be frank, the $12,500 isn't enough. That's exactly why the number is going to get bigger over time, but it's a great start. And ideally this is going to be the account that you put a little money towards every single month. So even if you build it to a comfortable level of uh, expenses, still put a few in there every month. Maybe if it's depending on how much money you have, $50 here, hundred dollars there, $500 here, whatever you can afford to do, I would highly recommend you put it in there. And since this type of savings account will obviously be over a longer period of time than pretty much any of your other savings account, it would be a very smart idea to take advantage of a high yield savings account, also known as a high paying savings account compared to your regular standard bank. If you choose the right high yield savings account, you could earn 20 times more than you would in a regular savings account. And probably even more than that, if I'm completely honest. So instead of just earning $1 per every $1,000 you save, think of earning $20 per every $1,000 you save. Not a ton of money, but it's significantly more than one freaking dollar. So as you continue to build your savings account, on top of this, your money is actually gonna be able to make money and eventually $1,000 will turn to $10,000. And on top of that, whatever percentage of that will be added on because of the fact that you're consistently putting money into your high yield savings account and it yields you that percentage every single month and the only way it'll drop is if the feds drop it just like they did this year because of the pandemic going on and right now i'm going to throw some examples of high yield savings accounts on the screen right now just so you can see them and reference them i don't know them off the top of my head so here you go now here's something that i've heard a long time ago and i just want to share with you guys as well you can think of your emergency fund is your attitude insurance. No matter what happens, you know you are going to be good. You know that you can survive for several months if, even if something happens and you lose your stream of income or your streams of income, you know you can live off of that for several months if you absolutely need to. You won't understand until you completely have this funded, but once you do, your confidence is going to skyrocket, you're gonna be more calm, and things are going to feel a lot better for you, and you won't be so anxious when it comes to money. Again, if you wanna learn more about emergency funds, just check out my videos about them. I have a ton of videos on them. You will learn a lot beyond what I'm discussing in this video. Then we have the fun one, short-term savings. And in this one, I would put $1,500 in easily. And again, so the standard savings account is separate from the emergency fund is separate from the short-term savings account. And here's why. This short-term savings account is a savings account you use for typically wants or needs that are just really pricey, like say a refrigerator or something like that. But the mindset is you're only gonna be saving for the amount of time it takes for you to save up for the particular item. Then you're gonna take that money out and you're gonna spend it on the item. Now this could be a car. This could be a video game. This could be anything you really want to get. It could be at home security, whatever the case is, whatever you want to spend your money on, entertainment system, that's what this account is for. And if you have 1500 in it, I mean, it's really easy to get pretty much any item that you want to get, like any one item that you want to get or two decently priced items. Like if you wanted to get a new gaming console and a new TV, that 1500 would easily cover it. If you want to get a new laptop, that 1500 would easily cover it. If you want to get a new refrigerator, that 1500 would easily cover it. So I think 1500, especially out of 20,000, is a really easy amount to put in that short-term savings. And you don't have to worry about it gaining interest because literally you're taking it out and spending it anyway. It's not gonna be in there long enough to gain any type of interest anyways. So that's why I say 1500 and I would separate that. And the way I separate my short-term savings, I use an app called Capital. And I don't like to think about things. So if I know I wanna get something, let's say, 
I want to get something next month that I know is going to cost, say, over $1,000 or over $500, let's say, I would just put a certain percentage of each of my paychecks into the capital account and my bank would automatically transfer it over to capital. Capital doesn't gain any interest at all. It just kind of gives your money a holding place, but you can assign different categories and you can say new TV, new refrigerator, new gaming console, like literally all those examples I just made. I can't think of any creative examples right now, so excuse me for that, but you have all these different categories and your money goes inside of these. So within the separate savings account that is capital, you can further separate your different savings for capital. So you can literally save for a refrigerator and a TV at the same time without having to worry about mixing your money up by having it all in one savings account and say, I think I need this much for this. It's like, no, I need exactly this much for this. I need exactly this much for this. I'm saving for both of them at the same time. And whenever one of them is ready, I'm gonna take that money out and pay for that item. And then when the second one's ready, I'll pay for that item. And the way capital works, it's so well balanced that you might even have um, enough money saved up for both of them at the same time. So you can actually get both of those things at the same time. And I'm telling you, I, I, that app is amazing. I've spoken about it several times in a bunch of my other videos. And, and it's 100% it's free if you want a more premium version of it. There is a paid version of it within the app. There's three different categories and I'll show them on screen right now, but the basic one is free. And really honestly, the basic one is all you need if you wanna save without really even having to think about it. You can really go beyond expectations in terms of savings without even thinking about it. You would be surprised how much money that you won't miss if it goes into a separate account that you're not seeing every day. You would be surprised. So anyways, long story short gets you a short-term savings and i would highly recommend capital to put your short-term savings in and if you don't want to do capital i would just recommend getting another checking account with some other bank it doesn't really have to be a bank that's known for giving interest just any bank and the, the really the biggest point here for short-term savings is to keep it separate from your main account okay that is the biggest thing this especially applies to you if you're the type of person to move money from your savings account into your checking account just so you could buy something uh-huh yeah that's you ain't it mm -hmm, i know it's okay we've all done it before last but not least we have the long-term savings account and i would put the last three thousand dollars in that but reggie why three thousand dollars if it's your long-term savings account i'm getting there because this isn't an ordinary account remember earlier when i said there's an account that will really make you build wealth and make your money really make money i was not referring to the emergency fund i was referring to this this is going to be what i was talking about when it comes to taking your money to the next level so since this is a long-term savings account you definitely absolutely 100 percent do not want to touch this account like at all don't withdraw from this account at all literally no matter what this is your wealth building account if you contribute to this account consistently and abundantly enough this money can grow and last you generations and generations here's how it works first of all the type of account this is so your your long-term savings account is going to be within what is called an index fund which is basically a largely diversified and safe investment account that will give you between seven and 11 percent return every single year which is better than any high yield savings account and which is way better than any standard savings account not to mention it also pays you dividends for the stocks that you own within the largely diversified investment account which is a lot of stocks and if any of that confuses you welcome to the club you're in with a bunch of other people but don't worry i have an entire video on index funds and i go into extreme detail and i go into exactly why index funds are the best type of investment in terms of stocks and bonds and for the best types of index funds to put money in the best ones typically require a $3,000 minimum to invest in, which is why I said $3,000. But it doesn't just stop here. After this, I'd recommend you putting a few hundred dollars per month within this because like I said, that money is going to grow, 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 grow. Like it will compound like no other. And if you don't understand how compound interest works, check out my video. It literally, that, that is like my staple video and it's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. It really goes over exactly how compound interest works and how it can work for you, especially if you start early because you probably didn't know this, but over the next 20 to 30 years, this money can actually grow in well into the million, but it takes that consistency of putting those hundreds of dollars in there per month 
without really even thinking about it. And if you're wanting me to specify on the hundreds, really, I'd say 500 a month if you can do it. Absolutely. If you can do more than that, do more than that. And that's exactly how much it takes over the next 20 to 30 years to turn that money into millions because it's already compounding. It's already paying you dividends. It's already reinvesting the dividends. It's going to grow like crazy. So my ultimate goal is to have so much money like in my long-term savings account, right? That I'm able to make my salary off of the returns of that investment per year, every single year, without even touching the principal. That's my goal. So let's say the 30 year old in our example has the exact same goal that I do. And let's say this 30 year old makes $60,000 a year, which isn't really low, isn't really high, somewhere in the middle. In order for their investment account to pay them their salary every year just based off of the interest alone, without touching the principal, they would need to have $1.2 million invested, which means their money would have to grow to $1.2 million. That $1.2 million, then over the course of say a year or so, that $1.2 million, as long as they're getting at least 8% interest that year, and again, it's between seven and 11% interest that the index fund pays you per year on average they're going to get that sixty thousand dollars per year in interest of course some of this will be taxed but the good news is they can do this every single year without touching their principal if they really really wanted to and they could live off of just the interest just the sheer interest of their investment that's crazy but it also puts into perspective that obviously it's going to take some time to build up to the millions within that account so that's why i say the 20 to 30 years so i definitely rambled a little bit at the end there but thank you so much for watching my name is reggie bryant this channel is all about personal finance and it's also a little bit about personal growth so you can control you control your finances and control your life because these are the tools that you need to take full control over your life if you don't want to do something for the rest of your life if you're tired of waking up in the morning and going and doing the same thing that you really don't like doing, if you don't really know the proper things to do to put your money in a better situation and really to propel your future forward, this is the channel for you. This shows you how, to, this shows you everything from how to budget your money, how to deal with your money, how to stop caring what people think, you know, basic principles, emotional intelligence. But most of all, it's, it's really around your personal finances, how you control yourself, how you control your money, how you control your urges to spend your money, but also your perception of others and others' perception of you. It's really just a channel all about the personal value and your market value that you bring to this world. And this channel will help you bring your market value up, no matter what your goal is. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Only, I better...